Hello everyone, this is Duke with a video about this assignment called Quick Tune in um, our multi autonomy class. And so in this assignment we're going to be going through Quick Tune uh, a little bit more in detail, learning how it works a little bit, and then I will show you a demonstration of using Quick Tune in flight uh, using the simulated copter, not a real copter uh, in this case, but uh, the process should walk you through how to set it up with your actual copter, go fly it, and get the results you need for the assignment. Make sure we're recording. Okay, good. You notice I try and use some hotkeys to not give you the OBS in intro every single time. We're trying to improve bit by bit. Okay, so in this assignment, what we want to do is use what's called the Quick Tune Lewis script. This is a script, a Lewis script, like we've used a couple other for a couple other things in class and in the assignments. That uh, in this case helps us to tune the copter or get a default a better default set of tuning parameters on our aircraft. Okay, um, tuning parameters, we'll talk about this in class more, but uh, when you tune a quadcopter, you're helping it to basically know how to control the aircraft better. You're helping the flight controller control the aircraft better by knowing what values to apply to uh, certain, certain aspects of the control loop in order for the copter to maintain control well based on its physical properties, uh, motors and battery voltage and things like that. So when we adjust tuning values, we're helping the flight controller fly the aircraft better, if, if that is in a nutshell, I guess you could say. The Quick Tune Lewis script is, um, I guess, relatively new in the Ardu Pilot world. Auto Tune is something we'll do a little bit later in the semester. That's been around for a, a long time. Quick Tune has been the last couple of years been developed. So it's a different way of helping the aircraft to tune itself, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's less uh, prone to catastrophic damage um, from you know upsetting the aircraft while it's tuning which typically doesn't happen with the size of aircraft we're using in this class but can happen and it can be pretty devastating when you're trying to tune a very very large aircraft and it it gets damaged while trying to tune it because of how auto-tune works at least that's my understanding of the differences there um, from from these two different things in this segment though we're focusing on quick tune and we're going to go ahead and go through this process we're going to get a script Lewis script we'll have found on this page, a link here. We're going to upload, upload it to our flight controller and perform a quick tune with our copter in flight. Okay, um, You'll do it with your real copter. Of course, I'm going to do it with a simulated copter to show you. Uh, and in, in this case, this isn't a requirement. A quick tune is just a requirement for the class. You want to have your telemetry radio connected uh, during this flight because you'll need to, to use some of those telemetry logs in a later assignment. So just realize what I have. Uh, what I need to have for this assignment is your laptop, right? USB cable, your transmitter, flight battery, telemetry radios, okay? Um, and then, of course, a place to fly, all right? For this specific assignment, when you're done, you'll upload the data flash log from the flight in which you perform the quick tune to the assignment, as well as a screenshot of the log in the log viewer where you point out what at what point during the log you engage the quick tune. So we'll look at that. You should also include a screenshot of Mission Planner's extended tuning page showing PID values from before and after the quick tune. So a couple different things you're working on here, though it's all kind of in, from one flight. Uh, we'll do the setup. You want to make sure when you fly this, you have your telemetry radio set up so you can do this assignment properly. Uh, for the quick tune assignment that we're looking at right now, you'll upload a data flash log and a screenshot, okay? And then another screenshot as well, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and go to this page here. So if you click on this link, It'll open up the Ardu Pilot uh, AP scripting uh, GitHub, okay? And uh, you remember perhaps from the software in the loop assignment where we use the vertical circle script uh, example from this uh, repository. Here, we actually don't need to go into, um, I guess, the exact same place as before. We'll go into examples, uh, and this time we'll look for a different script. I'm just gonna control F search for quick Quick tune. Oops, I put a space in front of it. That's why. Quick, sorry. Why is it doing that? Strange. I could search for it just a second ago. Okay, so we'll go ahead and find quick tune here. Wait, I thought it was. Oops, maybe I'm on the wrong one. Sorry. I apologize. It's not an example, it's in applets. That's my bad. Okay, so these are kind of more polished uh, Lewis scripts, we'll say. And a lot of them, most of them have a .md file that kind of is like a readme file and explains how the script works. So here we'll search for quick tune. There it is, VTOL quick tune. 
Okay, there's the .lua, that's the actual script, and this is the .mb, that's kind of the uh, descript descriptive file, I guess you could say. So again, I'm sorry, once you go from this page here, okay, you will go into applets, and you can then control F search for quick, and you'll find the VTOL, VTOL quick tune Lua. Now there is another quick tune script in, in this example, but it's for Rover. We're not using a Rover that's like a ground vehicle. And so don't use that one, okay? But use the VTOL quick tune script here. So um, you can do it either order. You can go ahead and go in here and you can download this first, just like with our other assignment we did. You can download it here if you want to download it first, that's fine, okay? Um, or you can download it later. You need to download it at some point. But what we're going to look for here, find it again, there we go, is the .md file. Okay. And this gives kind of a good uh, walkthrough of how you want to set this up, how you actually use the QuickTune script, and then what you should do to have it work correctly. Okay. So here we have a little description of the script. It says this script can be used to automate the process of producing a good manual tune for the VTOL rate control parameters. So again, it's a, it's a safe way to tune even very large vehicles, from my understanding, uh, where the, the, the danger of just going straight to auto-tune can sometimes be catastrophic, since auto-tune um, physically moves the aircraft a lot more. We'll do auto-tune in a later video later in the semester. But this script is used in Q-loiter mode for quad planes or loiter mode for multicopters. Okay, so remember that. You want to use the script in loiter mode. Okay. Look, also can be used in other VTOL modes. Might as well use it in loiter because that will help you do a position hold, which will have the copter stay closer to where you want it to be, probably. Okay. Some scripts, not all scripts, but some scripts, including this one, will um, create parameters, basically, in Mission Planner. So in the other examples, sometimes we don't have this be the case, but in this script creates extra parameters. So these are all parameters. Quick enable, quick RC function, quick axes, quick double time, etc. Okay. Um, when you use the script, you have these parameters available in the parameter list, and you can set them to do whatever you need to do. Okay, so we'll come back to those a little bit. We don't have to change too much of the default settings for what we're going to do. Okay, but down here, if you get to the operation section of the script or the, of the kind of readme file, um, it talks about the prerequisites here. So first, you should set up harmonic notch filtering using the guide in the Autopilot Wiki. Okay, in in the class you're in right now, you've already done that. Okay, if we go over here to the calendar, you should have done some filtering here, and then we're doing quick tune here. So that's that's we're following that order there. Oops. Okay. Uh, the tuning system relies on you already having reduced gyro noise. It will fail if your noise is too high. Okay, so if you haven't done harmonic notch filtering yet, then you shouldn't do this yet. Okay. First we're going to install the Lua script into the scripts directory on the flight controller, just like we did in the software in the loop example, and I'll do that in a second there. And then we will have SCR enable set to one. Okay, that just enables scripting to work. All right, generally speaking. And then we're going to set this new parameter, quick enable to one, which is a parameter that's created by this script. Okay, that enables this script to function. All right, so let's go back down here. Okay, you then need to set up a three position switch on an available RC input channel for controlling the tune, uh, or two position if you use autosave. I'm going to go through this as if I have a three position switch because I think most of you have one of those available on your radio. You may have to temporarily use something for this and then you can change it back to whatever else you wanted later. But I'm going to teach this or go through this as a three position switch. Okay. If, for example, channel six is available, which is the example I use when I do it here in a second as well, you should set RC6 option to 300. Okay. So we're saying RC channel six is going to control scripting one and the actual parameter value for that is 300. Okay. And let's see, then we go... We don't need to worry about this one here. Okay. We're just going to use it in the default, just scripting one. It'll be the only script we have on our aircraft when we do this. Okay. And then it goes through the process of what actually happens when you fly this. So you take off the aircraft, put it in queue loiter or loiter. We're going to use loiter since we're flying a quadcopter. Okay. And have it a steady hover and low wind. So you can't do this when it's really windy. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly still, I don't think, but low wind. Okay. You're then going to move that control switch, so in our case the channel 6 switch, um, to the middle position. Okay, So it needs to be at a middle value, if that makes sense. Excuse me. 
Uh, we Our switches will typically go from about 1,000 to about 2,000. So we need to get it close to 1,500, which is why we use the middle position. Okay, That will start a tuning process. You'll see these messages go up uh, across on your ground control station mission planner. So this is another reason to have your telemetry to hooked up. You'll see these messages go across the ground station showing progress of the tune. It'll tell you as it goes, you know, basically what it's doing. Uh, as it's tuning roll, it'll give you a couple different descriptions of roll and roll complete or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it says. But as the aircraft reaches the limit of oscillation, okay, it will start a small oscillation, then it will reduce that the gain by this margin. Okay, so when we talk about oscillation, we're talking about the aircraft uh, basically wobbling. We can say wobbling or or um, kind of wiggling back and forth. Oops, sorry, wiggling back and forth in the air. That's an oscillation. Uh, so basically, this tuning script is trying to adjust these values down here, which are all PID values or tuning values. Okay, and when it gets to the limit, it will you'll see it you know shake a little bit in the air, but it's much less than the twitches it, it does in auto tune, which is a later um, tuning exercise we'll do. Okay, and it will then reduce the gain. So it's adjusting numbers here in these parameters. Okay, after it. Um, so it's going it's to reach that limit, and then it will reduce the gain by that percentage, and then move on to the next parameter. Okay, so it's going to you know change that number until you get the oscillation. Then it's going to reduce the number, and then move on to the next one. The same thing, next one, next one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. There are also some other um, settings that it will adjust. So filter settings here. We've messing with some filters a little bit in class already. It's going to adjust some of these filtering settings as as follows here okay it's going to set those automatically with the script all right once the tuning is finished you'll see a tuning done message okay you can save the tune by moving the switch to the high position so all the way up typically or you know towards you or however you want to think about it okay so first we had it in the let's see here the middle position right so it went from low to middle and that started the tune the tune then finishes and if you want to save it you move the switch all the way to the high position. Okay, you should do this be, be, to save before you land in this arm. Okay, you should do this before you land in this arm. Okay, that's a big one because if 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 you don't, okay, we're we're not following the the procedure here, and I don't, I don't know that it will save the the values it generated. I'm not sure if it will or not. I'm assuming it won't, since it says you should do it before you land. If you save before the tune is completed, so if you were to move the switch high before it finishes, before you get that done message, okay, it, it will pause, and the, anything that's done so far will be saved, okay, um, and then you can resume tuning by returning the switch to the middle position, or if you move to a low position, the parameter that's currently being tuned will be reverted. Okay, so basically if it's in the middle, let's say it's in the middle of tuning um, pitch D here, okay, and you need to, you know, move the copter, I don't know. For some reason, you you can't be tuning right at that moment. Okay, so you can then pause the tune, okay, by uh, moving the switch to the high position. Okay, and it will pause. Everything else before that will be saved. So if we're doing pitch D, a roll roll will be saved. Okay, but it'll pause in the middle of that value, and the current value of the one being actively tuned will remain active. You can then resume that tuning by moving the switch back to middle position from high. Or if you can move, or if you move it to the low position, kind of like you turn it off, then whatever it's working on, in this case pitch D, will be reverted to the original value, but all the other saved ones will still stay there. If that makes sense, I'm just trying to make a big deal about this because a lot of times we'll do these kind of exercises and people come in and go, yeah, I finished it, it tuned it, it's awesome. You go to look at your values and they're all default still because you didn't save it correctly, or you landed before you saved it, or things like that. Okay. Um, if you move the switch to the low position at any time in the tune, before using the tune save, all the parameters will be reverted to their original values. Okay, parameters will also be reverted if you disarm before saving. So that's why we have this note up here. Okay, so now we do know why that why they have that. So if you are tuning, 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 you know it says tune done. You're like awesome. I'm gonna go come land right now. Okay, and you forget to put the switch high then you just lost all those values. At least they're not saved to the copter. You could probably find them in the uh, log, but you, they wouldn't be saved to the copter. Okay, so you can't disarm before you save it, or else they won't save. And then if you, during any point where you're flying, if you just flip the switch to low, it will just 
basically revert to all the original values. It won't save anything either. Okay. This one's also um, important to note. If you need to move the copter, now if you're in loiter mode, it should stay fairly in the same place. But if you need to move the copter for some reason uh, in the air, you can always you can still fly the copter. You don't you don't have to you know be hands off. You shouldn't be hands off. You can still move the copter around in the air. Um, and when you do that, the tune will pause. The process will pause until four seconds after the pilot's pilot input stops. Okay, so basically. You move the copter, you get it to a new spot. It looks good. It's you know out of the way. It's a good good place to fly right there. Good place to do the tune. You take your you know you don't you don't take your hands off the controller, but you stop moving the sticks, and it will then be four seconds after that. It will st start to uh, work on the tune again. Okay, you'll see those those messages pop up on your ground control station and everything. So that is how the process is supposed to work. There is some note some notes here about the two position switch. Okay, so you can use a two-position switch if you have to. Um, just follow the instructions here. I'm happy to help you with that if you need to. Okay, but ideally you'd use a three-position switch. Just follow the kind of standard operation here, and that's what I'll show you in just a second. Okay, um, when I flew this the other day with one of the X500s, I didn't need to adjust any of the other parameters. Okay, I didn't I didn't change like the margin or anything like that. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that for now. If you're having issues, then we'll go back and look at things and see if we need to make any adjustments, but I, I don't think uh, you need to be on the defaults. Okay. One thing I will point out, if you have a full battery on your aircraft, you should be able to do all three axes. Um, but if you can't for some reason or use a smaller battery or something like that, you may want to adjust the quick, quick axes parameter and just, for example, tune just roll. And then swap battery and do just pitch and just yaw or something like that if you need to. Um, but like I said, if you have a fully charged battery and everything's kind of default or normal for your X500, you should be able to do all three axes in a battery. All right, so let's go ahead and and um, we'll we'll pause here at least in terms of the video. I think we're getting trying to make the videos too long, um, and I'll be right back.